Welcome back to the channel. This week I have the very special 2024 Mazda MX-5 RF GT and I have the Grand Sport package as well. So it's fully loaded and I have the hard top with the retractable roof. So this is as fully loaded as you could get. This is the most expensive Mazda that, or Mazda MX-5 that you could buy. Mazda Miata as well, you could say. We've got the BBS wheels with the Brembo brakes right there. It looks fantastic. What a nice red color this is. I love the slight redesign, the slight facelift they've done here on the front as well. It looks very aggressive. You kind of got like the front splitter there on the bottom that just looks amazing. I am such a fan of this Mazda Red. Mazda does reds so well because the red is so like different in the sun. Like as I kind of turn, you can see the, the color kind of darkening or lightening versus the sun. It looks so good. Let's take you around back here. And I am just in awe of this thing. I think it is so, so cool. I love the rear of this thing. It's small and it feels small. But oh my goodness, does it not disappoint already? So yeah, let's actually hop in this thing. I'll give you my first impressions and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. All right, so welcome back inside the Mazda Miata now. I'm gonna talk a little bit loud because I got the roof open because I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film. So let's start off the first impressions with probably one of the coolest features in the Mazda MX-5 is the fact that, the, you know, we don't have to have a roof if we don't want one. It's sunny out, I've got the AC on me, and I'm just having a great time. So, I'll do a couple more shots, of course, with the, you know, the roof actually closed, and you can probably hear me a little bit better, but uh, yeah, it's just such a nice ride, such a nice little nimble car. So let's downshift the gear and see if we can disappear in the Miata, let's see. Downshift, rev match is by myself, let's go. You can definitely hear the wind. <laughs> oh, but it's so fun. There's no shortage of fun here this week. And look, the wind noise is extremely loud when you're going at highway speeds. I'm going about 80 kilometers right now and it's quite loud in here, but still, I don't care. Because <laughs> you just get the wind in your hair. I actually have the windows closed so that it's a lot less loud. So hopefully you can you can hear me a lot better. But yeah, so far the handling is great. Like this thing just sticks to the road and it's just so much fun to drive. Like, ugh, I've never driven a Miata in my life. So this is my first experience of an MX-5, of a Miata, whichever name you want to use for it. I've never driven something like this, something so small yet so powerful without having an abundance of horsepower. It's an incredible amount of fun. And oh my goodness, I can't wait to show this to people. And the red with the beige interior here that we've got, fantastic, absolutely no problems. I cannot wait to get into this thing with you guys. I hope you're just as excited as I am because uh, even in fifth gear, it's still got quite a bit of power to kind of push, you know? I don't even need to shift to sixth. It's just pretty powerful. And yeah, we're gonna have a great time this week. So I'll pick it back up later. I'll show you the interior, I'll show you the trunk space, and I'll show you everything there is to know if you're in the market for an MX-5. This is what it's gonna be like to actually live with one and to commute with one every single day of the week. So let's get into that. All right, another day back outside with the Mazda MX-5 RF. Really, really love this car. Second day with it, been driving it, drove it a bunch yesterday. Drove it a little bit this afternoon and then on my way home, of course, I stopped to film this for you guys so you can really check out how cool it looks. I just, I can't get enough of it. It's so small, it gets so many looks on the road. Like the, I just love this spec. It's such a nice spec. Of course, you don't have to go with it. It's not mandatory or anything, but I mean, you know what? It does come cheaper, but this, this is the one that I'm hooked on now. So let me actually show you the trunk space here. So I'm gonna press the button and you come back here open it like this and you can see it fits my bag no problem any bigger we might have a bit of an issue but still I fit all the stuff in here because I don't really like putting it in the passenger seat especially with the top down you know if I wanted to leave the car I don't really want to leave anything inside the car that people can just grab by and put it out and look you can see the little Bose thing here for the headrest and stuff like that you really get a good shot of the interior from right here if the camera would work with me there we go coming around you really get a good shot of the, the really cool interior. So let me know what you think. I think this is the best red, you know, out there. Mazda does such a good red, such a good job with their red. So let me know what you think in the comments. 
Alrighty, so sitting inside now the Mazda MX-5 RF. You can see I've got the fantastic looking interior. It's raining outside, so perfect time to go over the interior with you. So let's check this out. A really, you know, it's quite a big steering wheel, which I like for the size of the car. Usually you, you maybe would go smaller, but this, this takes up the space here in the driver's cockpit very well. I do have some cruise control and stuff like that. I'm not gonna use it at all though. And then I also have my media controls, my phone buttons, and that's it. Don't need anything else. Nice classic Mazda steering wheel with the white stitching in there no complaint at all there left hand side we have some the traction control off or partially off and then fully off then we have our parking sensors and then our automatic high beams with some blank buttons right there the trunk button is right underneath as well as the button for the hood you see we have this nice carbon fiber looking trim here as well as this tan interior with the paint match door this feels exactly the same as it does on the outside it looks so cool it's one of the only cars i've ever seen do this you can see it on the other side too so whatever color you have on the exterior that's what you're going to get here on the interior and this matches beautifully oh my goodness i love it so moving over we do have some circular vents which is really nice you don't need very many because this isn't a big cabin at all and then we have just the standard one here are nice and i think it's bigger this year the infotainment and we do have carplay and android auto as well we do have we have the option for navigation but you need to add the mazda sd card and then you can uh you can get that if you want but it's still there it is an option should you want it uh but usually you're going to use your apple apple carplay google maps whatever it is you're going to use you're going to use one of those probably more than this settings are very basic too there's not a lot of vehicle settings or anything this kind of comes as is not a lot to play around with but you don't really care about settings and tech here you really care about the driving so we have some very basic hvac controls easy to understand feel very good these buttons and dials don't feel cheap at all so i like that it's very simple i understand it i don't need dual zone i don't need auto climate really although it is an auto climate you don't need it they could have put something very basic in here and i've still been happy with it we do get two heated seats this button right over here you're going to either hold it up or hold it down for a couple of seconds and it's going to remove or put back your roof very nice and then I have a little storage that looks like it could have a wireless charging pad, but I just use it for my wallet because it just fits beautifully in there. And then we have two USB-C ports as well. And then we get to our manual shifter, very nice six speed manual transmission. You got to push it in and go to the right to put it into reverse. You can see there, I like the little ball, feels great. It's a great driving position too. I'm not touching any of the controls down here. I am purely just operating that. You can't really see the pedals because they're not um, aluminum or anything like that, but they are there because otherwise this doesn't work. Manual handbrake, we like to see that. And it's out of the way of you know my hand on this side. So I'm never touching, it's never in my way. I like that. Then we do have this knob that's gonna control the infotainment display. So that's gonna be, you know, for anything that you want. You also have some quick access buttons as well as some volume control, stuff like that. I don't mind the knob. It does become a touchscreen when you're in Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, so that's good. But I don't hate it. I think it, even with the manual trans, even if I'm like doing this, you know, it's still pretty quick because they're so close together. I have a little bit of storage right here. You can see, like I'm just kind of storing some, some cards and some video stuff, like the little microphones and stuff I'll put in here. And then just behind me, I gotta contort my body a little bit. I have this guy, which actually does lock, which is nice. Um, so you can leave your your valuables in there because we don't have a glove compartment. That is really the only in-car storage besides the trunk that we get here. And then if I look up top, you can see we have like, you know, the the kind of lining for the roof. You can see it's got a disconnect there. You can see kind of some of the, some of the mechanical stuff for that to happen. Bose in the headrests very nice to have it's a very good sound again small cabin you don't need big speakers so the, the ones that they have in here are very very solid and yeah i am just at home here so far very comfortable as well i am just a fan of this thing and i am getting it more and more and more every day why this is some people's dream car they don't need a ferrari they don't need a lamborghini they need an mx5 and they're happy and i am starting to understand that and yeah it's been a good week i am I'm already dreading the day that I have to let this thing go because I don't want to. It's one of those. All right, I'll think it back up later. Okay, so now we're back inside the Mazda MX-5. I've kind of got a little bit more driving under my belt, gotten used to the manual transmission, stuff like that. So I can kind of talk to you about, you know, how it's been so far. We're pretty much almost done the week here. So I really want to show you a little bit more driving because that's really where this car comes alive right and i mean i can't have the top down because it's raining so also the audio will be a lot better you'll be able to actually hear what i'm telling you uh, about the driving and stuff like that so yeah 
Um, so just for starters, I do feel very small and that was something that initially took me a while to get used to because I'm not really used to driving small vehicles like this. And I mean, this is a very small car, uh, but that doesn't take away from anything. Honestly, it's uh, very, very fun to drive, very easy to drive the manual transmission, even knowing I don't have that much experience, it's very easy to operate. Um, you know, and I just, it's just so much fun. Like, you know, I can't really push too, too much here because I don't want to wrap around a tree. I am small. I got small little tires. So <laughs> with the road wet, I am going to play it safe, but still, you know, 181 horsepower for this little frame, little rocket, little rocket. And it feels fun. Even if like you don't accelerate from zero to 60 in two seconds, it, honestly with the Miata, it doesn't matter at all because you're having so much fun getting to that 60. You're shifting a lot. It's a very active shifting experience. You see, like I can rev match downshift quite quickly now, something that I've had to practice in the Miata because there is no auto rev match in here. I do it all myself and something that I'm actually really proud that I've gotten so good at. Like I remember what speed I'm going at and stuff like that. This really has brought my manual driving level up a notch. I can tell you that with absolute confidence. And you know, the stalling hasn't, I really haven't stalled at all being a first time or not a first time, a really beginner manual driver. You know, obviously sometimes my, my rev matches are a bit too high and stuff like that, but I am, there are times where I absolutely nail it and I feel like a God. Can push it a little bit too, slightly push it into this corner, but I'm not doing it too much. And then the straightaway, woo. There's not a lot of rev hang. I don't notice too much anyways. I'm not like a crazy experienced manual driver where I would even notice that, that much rev hang anyways. So I just love how this thing sticks to the road. So you can tell why people love these things on the track because if you're really good with the pedal box and the transmission and stuff like that, you can absolutely, I mean, you're not gonna set a lap record, but you can absolutely have the best time out of anybody with any other car on that track and I completely get it now it just makes sense uh, this is my first ever MX-5 Miata whatever that I've ever driven so it, oh my goodness it's just so cool no it's not practical for the winter no there's not a lot of storage but if you can afford this as like a second driver uh, you know for the summer when you can take the top down pinnacle pinnacle MX-5 it is so fantastic and they've also done some nice things to it right like the, the refresh looks good too I just mm, Feel free to pick on my manual driving as well. I, I'm open, very open to pointers from very experienced people. I kind of try to take everything that you guys say and then I, I, I apply it to my next you know, uh, manual car that I'm gonna get. There is more coming in, in the next couple of months. I think there's three coming in the next couple of months. So look forward to that. Now the Miata or the MX-5 does come in you know, a automatic transmission. So if you don't wanna do all the things that I'm doing, the rev match, stuff like that, you just wanna have fun. Uh, well, you you know, you're lucky and they do offer a automatic, but I don't think that is as fun. I, I think the MX-5 gets a lot more boring when you take away the manual transmission. I just, it's just so much fun to use and operate. It does have hill start assist for my, my beginner manual. So it does hold the brakes for about three seconds and you can get yourself going. For me, it's been more than enough to, to get myself going on pretty much any hill. I haven't tested it on like a super steep one because I, I don't, I'm not about that life at all. Uh, you know, I don't want to roll down it and embarrass myself. Uh, so confidence is high right now with the, with the manual driving. So we're going to keep it high and not uh, push it. But no, you know what? I, I do think that I could do it. I just think, uh, you know, the Mazda doesn't, I don't need it. I don't want it to help me. I really don't. I want all the assist to not be there. Maybe the traction control, especially in this, but there's a button where you can turn it off for like a track mode and it will not interrupt that much the traction control. So that's pretty good. But uh, for somebody like me, pretty much going to keep it on all the time. Not going to push this thing to the limit. And, and that's the cool thing. You don't have to absolutely rail this thing to the red line. You don't have to do any of that. And it's still such a rewarding driving experience. Also look at, look at this interior. I would have liked to have the Recaros though. I will say that. I think if I do spec it, I might want the Recaros. I think the Recaros look a little cooler. And I would love to maybe sit in, in the one with the Recaros at least once. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm absolutely in love. I'll pick it back up later. We'll probably do one more little driving thing or if I find anything else interesting, I'll, of 
course, I'm going to show you uh, interior tours, all the stuff like that. If I haven't already done it, it's coming up. So pick it back up later. All right, back outside. It's another nice night with the Mazda MX-5. And I've got the top down again, of course, because I don't know how many times I'm going to get a convertible vehicle this year. So I'm really going to make sure that I enjoy every time. And if it's nice out, I'm definitely driving with the top down. So you can see I've got these nice back these taillights look really good, really, really good. License plate is nice and lit up for all the police to see. You can see the interior is nice, and I'll actually sit in there in a second. Just running some errands at nighttime while there's no traffic. You know, it can kind of play around a little bit more, get away with a little bit more, and there's a little bit less interruptions. But man, it, it looks, the red looks just as good in the daytime as it does at night. I love how the red is so dynamic that it actually it feels like it changes color based off the lighting I'm in, the time of day, different things like that. It could look drastically different from one time to another. But let's let's get in and I'll show you some of that. So I'm not using my wide angle here, but I'll kind of bring it back to show you. So you can see I've got a bunch of stuff illuminated like the, the center the gauge cluster is mostly analog. We've got a little digital element there like I showed you already. It lights up perfectly well at night. I'll close the door here. You can kind of see everything lit up properly here. Everything that you need is lit up, like the, the top button, which I'm about to close. I'm, I'm really close to home anyways. But everything's nice and lit up. There's no ambient lighting. You don't really need that. I don't think you're buying this car for the ambient lighting, but everything's nice and, uh, you know, the Mazda's pretty good at it. They usually don't leave anything untouched in terms of illumination at nighttime. Get the nice seats too. Really cool. So let's actually close the roof here, close the top. So. You gotta hold the button and then you get kind of like this progress thing. And check this out. Whoop, it's gonna go right over my head. It makes the car feel a lot more claustrophobic if you don't like that being in tight spaces. Well, there you go. It takes about like 10 seconds, I think. Then you gotta roll up the windows manually. It's auto down, not auto up, but no bother. And you can already hear the, the difference in sound when I close the door. So I'll pick it back up a little bit later. Alrighty, another night with the Mazda MX-5. Let's do a cold start. It's not cold. I mean, it's not going to be cold, so it's kind of hard to actually do that, but we'll hop in quick and we'll start the engine. Ugh. Easy to get in, a little bit difficult to get out. You can see the startup. Nothing too loud. This is a difficult feel to get out when you tore your meniscus slightly, or I think I did anyways. Um, so there you go. Not a very big exhaust output but at least you can still see it right it's quite loud or loud enough anyways not not loud enough to piss the neighbors off but just enough to uh you know to know that it's on and running and it's going to be a good time every time you get in so i'm going to take this for a little spin and i'll pick it back up later okay back outside with the mazda mx5 i actually have like the perfect location look how good the car looks in this setting here no other cars around it nice building in the background and the sun is just beaming down on that excellent red paint oh man it just doesn't get any better does it and oh, look the top's down it's really hot out i'm sweating to get this shot for you but i am getting it because look at this look how good it looks in the sun oh man just can't can't go wrong with it at all i i am so obsessed with the color this is the exact trim i'd want now i think i'm too spoiled although i would take some recaros that that's the only kind of difference that i think I would actually get here is the Recaros look so much better. But yeah, I have to show you what this, let me know what you think about this spec because, oh man, this is such a nice car to drive. And look at that in the scenery here. Drop lower with the camera and we have ourselves a nice picture. Check that out. I keep forgetting to film this, so I'm gonna show you right now. I have removable cup holders in here. It's really cool. So say my passenger doesn't want it here, I can easily swing around and place it right there where that guy is but so far the most convenient place is right there. You can also remove them completely and put them in your little storage compartment, but I like it right there. Well, as much as it pains me to say it, this is pretty much gonna be the last kind of little walk around in my driveway for the Mazda MX-5. Uh, I'm dropping it off later today. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a drive, give you my final impressions, uh, you know, what it's like to been live with and drive as a manual, but uh, yeah, it really hurts to to have to make the last one on it. So I've loved looking at this color. Everybody that you know I've shown this car to has absolutely loved looking at this color. It's just a nice color. You can see I'm in the dark, so the red looks darker. If I'm in the sun, the red's gonna look lighter and a lot more shiny. It's like, you know, you can't go wrong with it. The little facelift they've done in the front is really nice too. And also that interior is absolutely fantastic. I mean, 
yeah, you can't go wrong with one of these things. It would definitely be added to my collection. Should I have, if I was, uh, you know, rich enough to afford one, it would definitely be added. But uh, yeah, I'm going to miss it. So let's hop in, set it off properly. Final impressions, let's do it. All right. So like I said, unfortunately, it is the time for the final impressions of the Mazda MX-5. I, <laughs> it's just so sad to say it as I don't want it to go. I want it to stay with me. Um, you know, I would own this car. I would just own it right out. If they offer me to buy it, how much is it? Maybe I do it, you know? <laughs> how often would I be able to drive it? Probably not that often, uh, just because I am always in different cars. But here's the thing, like, I've, I've driven well over 100 cars at this point, you know, over, I mean, I think we're quite a bit already this year. And this is like the most connected that I've ever felt to a vehicle or felt to the road from a vehicle out of every single one of them and look at that it's the first Mazda MX-5 that I've ever driven so it makes sense that it's this one that that makes me feel this way and, and I think that's why a lot of owners drive these things around I mean it, they're convenient they're practical they're small on the practical side impractical obviously storage stuff like that but you're not really buying it for that you already know that going in that you know you're not buying this thing for storage you're buying this thing for the fun that you're gonna have with it and there's absolutely no shortage of that. Like, you don't need all the fancy stuff I have. You don't need the hard top. You, you can get the soft top. Like, this thing can, can be spec'd out to be pretty affordable. I have the really expensive version. Obviously, now that I've seen it, I kind of want it. Minus maybe, you know, the, these leather seats, I'd kind of take the Recaros. But this red paint, absolutely got to have it. And maybe the retractable top, I kind of like it more. I feel like there's a bit less road noise with it, but it's hard to say without actually driving the soft top. So, you know, if I have some time at the end of the summer, maybe we will check out the soft top version for you. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know. I can definitely take it again. We'll not, uh, you know, we'll do a little soft top review. Absolutely no problem. Um, so yeah, like it's just, there's enough tech in here to keep, you satisfied to not keep you really needing any more i've got a big enough screen i've got wireless carplay wireless android auto i've got a backup camera which is you know standard on all vehicles but still there you know you don't need a 360 stuff you're small enough that if you can't figure it out well i don't know i think you shouldn't be on the road too much you know uh but yeah this does also come in an automatic so for the people that you know just want to have a nice little convertible drive well you know, the news is good there too because you don't have to learn manual Although I highly recommend that you do because like I said, I am, you know, not an everyday manual driver. I don't drive these things every day. I used to own an automatic. I learned automatic and I can tell you that, you know, this has a lot less assist than any of the other ones that I've driven this year. We've got no rev match. We've got nothing like that, but you don't care because it kind of forces you to learn and it's such an easy transmission. It doesn't have a crazy amount of power that you can kind of make your mistakes and not pay the price. Right. And I think that's what I've been doing this week a lot with the, you know, the MX-5. Like now I've become a nearly, a, you know, a rev match downshift pro by buffing the throttle on my own. Something I didn't think, you know, I would even have the confidence to do because usually if the rev match downshift is there, I use it and I take advantage of it instead of learning it. And now the MX-5 has forced me to learn. The ride quality as well has been really good, really comfortable. It's actually surprisingly like soft compared to what I thought it would be. I thought small car, I'm gonna, you know, my back is gonna need an adjustment after this week, but absolutely not. You know what, I think I've driven cars this year that are actually worse on ride quality than this one is. So, you know what, uh, <laughs> the Mazda MX-5 is not looking too bad, you know? Now, obviously, like any manual, it's not fun in traffic. It's long in traffic. Uh, thankfully, I haven't been stuck in too much of traffic this week, so that's been really good. And I'm so glad I got to drive this thing in the summer. It's just, you know, perfect weather. It's been like plus 30. I think I've actually got a sunburn from it yesterday on my arms because I drove it so much with the top off. You know, I didn't care if I was sweating or whatever. <laughs> it's just like, hey, this is the one and only time to do it. Let's have a good time. I've been showing this vehicle to everybody that I can, anybody that will listen. I'm like, you want to see this thing? you know what i get it i get the hype so much now and i'm so much on the i'm i'm on board the hype train full stop i love this and i'm jealous of people that own this version of the mx5 you guys are living your best lives out and wherever you are and if you're in somewhere where that, that doesn't have a big you know changing climate or brutal winters like i do here then 
the chances of you driving this all year round with absolute and complete confidence are quite high. Which again, if you are one of those people, I am extremely jealous of that. So I think I'll leave it there though. I really wanna keep talking because that means I still get to sit in this Mazda MX-5. I'm gonna take it on a little bit of a last little joy ride here by myself, enjoy it, maybe take the top off a few times and then drop it off and we'll be on to the next vehicle. Such is the life of a vehicle reviewer. So if you like what you saw, make sure to leave a like. Make sure you turn on the bell notifications when you click the subscribe button because YouTube is so bad at showing you when I post a new video. I've got a new car every single week and I post two videos on every single car every single week. You're not gonna wanna miss a single one of them. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next week. See you in the next car. Take care.